Tēnā koutou, katoa. Ko tamaki panga here te whare kogai toku ingoa. Kia ora, I'm Guy, Digital Experience Lead at Auckland War Memorial Museum. Basically, I'm here today to talk about how we 3D printed a bunch of shags and chucked them on an island, all in the name of research. We have an environmental problem in the Hauraki Gulf that puts the spotted shag and many other species at risk, and our museum has a real stake in trying to solve this problem. So we had an idea that uses some pretty new tech and one that intersects our collection, conservation and research. Before I start, I know you're thinking, man, this is going to have a lot of shag puns, especially as I am talking about shags breeding or the colloquial term known as shagging. <laughs> I'll restrain from terms shagorific, shagadelic, and won't shag around on these puns any further. This story starts with uh, the spotted shag, or Phalacrocorax punctatus, and ornithologist Matt Rayner, who is the curator of land vertebrates at Auckland Museum, who studies birds, particularly seabirds, and how environmental change is affecting them. He has been working for some time on the Hauraki Gulf species, monitoring these colonies and tracking a sad decline. Our use of the Gulf has not been kind to these birds. You see they are piscivores. They eat fish, and well, we have taken most of the fish. He found this out by looking at unique little bioindicators in the feathers of museum specimens called stable isotopes. These isotopes tell us the proportion of fish in the diet of the birds have declined over time, matching their population declines. He also looked at population genetics in these birds using DNA extracted from our museum specimens and was shocked to find the Hauraki Gulf species, species spotted shag are genetically distinct from birds further south making it even more important to save the 900 or so we have left. Currently, spotted shags have only one major breeding colony in the Horiki Gulf, so we decided we needed an insurance policy in the form of colony elsewhere. The idea of creating fake colonies isn't new. A few years ago, 80 concrete gannets were placed on Mana Island with a soundscape, uh, which attracted one famous gannet named Nigel, otherwise known as Nigel Nomates. Nigel quickly became infatuated with one of the decoys designed to lure the real thing to the island. He built a nest around the decoy and fell in love. Sadly, this story takes a Shakespearean turn. As Nigel died in the nest he had created with his beloved concrete gannet. So we decided we'd create our own fake spotted shag colony. Uh, using our collection of taxidermied uh, spotted shag, the irony being that these specimens were actually shot by Auckland Museum staff in the early 1900s, which was an acceptable practice. We 3D scanned these birds using Create Form Scanners, the Go50s. Uh, we weren't too sure of the output at this early stage, but we knew if we had a good enough 3D file that we could potentially 3D print or make moulds of these birds for the colony. The scanners were incredible pieces of technology, and we've been using them for the past three years to digitise our vast collection to Sketchfab. Now, 3D printing has been around for a while. Uh, it's, it's still kind of new technology though, right? Uh, we have 3D printers in our basement in the museum, but we quickly found a few issues with the printing process. So we, we couldn't print in full color. Uh, we couldn't print to scale. Uh, the 3D, 3D printing material wasn't strong enough, bearing these molds would have to withstand uh, harsh weather conditions, seawater, etc. Finally, the 3D printer could catch on fire, which really wasn't ideal. As part of the investigation, we did also look at creating moulds, uh, but quickly found um, that they're actually a lot more expensive and that the, the 3D printing process seemed to be relatively quicker and also more cost effective. We found an external provider called 3D Clone Print and they did an incredible job of printing all eight spotted shags. They used an ABS type of plastic that can withstand more than 90 degrees and added an exterior resin to make them more durable. These shags were printed in parts and then they got assembled together afterwards. Once printed and all out together, they come out looking a little bit like this. You might have noticed there's a couple of holes in the bottom. Uh, this is so we can fix them to steel rods on the island, ensuring that they don't end up in the ocean, because that would be a PR disaster for Auckland Museum. <laughs> we could only print in one colour and we needed another solution for that. So we recruited some wonderful volunteers who came in and helped get these birds ready to hit the town. We used marine-based paints and the volunteers working closely with the curators chose the right colours and that was the last step in getting them ready for their journey further in the whole Ricky Gulf in search of love.
And the birds headed northeast uh, to be installed on the Noises, uh, which are a collection of privately owned islands near Rikino Island in Auckland's Hauraki Gulf. The islands are uninhib uninhabited, pest-free, and some, offer some excellent fishing and diving. Installing the birds requires finding a suitable location, rocky outcrop close to flyways, feeding grounds, and a bonus pest-free environment, so rats and stoats and other nasties don't rob your nest. These birds were incredibly lifelike replicas, uh, complete with blue eye shadow, positioned in various spots and various positions. And this, this just isn't any old poo. <laughs> As you can see, it's carefully applied poo. I call this Matt uh, Jackson Pollock moment. He even got there on his, down on his hands and knees in these precarious precipices to make sure it was a bona fide replica of spotted shag poop. And finally, we installed a, a soundscape of Shag's Calling, which is a method widely used before uh, to really add to the environment and hopefully further incentivize these shags to fly down and take a look. The installation was placed in early Feb this year. We do have a camera set up to monitor them during breeding season to check the activity. Look, this is an experiment. It's by no means a silver bullet in trying to uh, help or try to solve the, the, the uh, seabird population in the Hororeke Gulf, but we pulled on our resources, our internal capabilities, and took some burgeoning tech to aid us and hope that this type of experience can be re-executed in other ways and, more importantly, create awareness. It's an example of how a cultural institute can access knowledge across teams. It is part of Auckland Museum's five-year strategy for pushing stretch thinking and leading a museum digital revolution. Finally, just acknowledging that we could not have done this project without the partners involved. A special mention to Seal and Al Gregory Trust, who supported the 3D printing cost, Tim Lovegrove, Todd Landers, Nils Pokel, as well as the Nurita family, who own and conserve the Noises Islands. Kia ora. Thank you.